Now, it seems to me, I know you were certainly stressing the, the foot. That's well, quite clear. Absolutely. But another thing that seems to me in this variation to be so important is the, is the body direction. Because it seems to me, the way you're teaching it, that it's so precise, even a tiny bit is very precise. It's like the facets well, of the Well, in order to stone, get into really. a beautiful arabesque, as it should be classically, you have to have your hips in the right place. Right. Can't, they can't be any place else. Yes. And as I explained to her, if she's going to go into arabesque here, she sometimes we already think, oh, I'm already going to have to be in passe over there. So I'll 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 be halfway there, and it's just the opposite. I'm here. I'm going to go into arabesque. I push back with this right hip, and that helps propel me even more over there. It's like if you want to take, if you want to throw a ball or something, you don't just go like this, you go like this and right. throw it. You know, you take, go back. So now you're going to go back with your hip to get it into the right place. Not only that, but it's just, that's the way you do arabesque. You don't do arabesque from here. You do arabesque pushing back from your hip, as he explained at the bar, with that foot back there. Then, as the f leg goes up, then that opens, the back leg. Yes. But in this case, also, you want to show really two pictures. Now, you want to show this picture and the Well, other the, the changing into the, into the passe position, which means much more of a pull up in your Adam, you see, he always talked, this is the soul of the dancer. He said, you mustn't dance with your eyes. You dance with this, and because of this, it comes out through your eyes. That you are doing this, and the eyes then react. In other words, it's not instigated with eyes, you know, it's because of this. And I, I don't know how you can emphasize it enough. And it's not old fashioned. It's just classical dancing. It's classical training. This is the way we are. But once this, then your whole back is being utilized. And shoulders can relax, but arms are not relaxed. They might look relaxed, but they're not relaxed. Yes. Maria, this step we're talking about, this um, arabesque into passe pose mm -hmm. with the change, isn't it the same step in the beginning of Symphony in C? Not exactly. Not exactly. In Symphony in C, you, uh, you don't really plie, but you relax your knee. Down, and you go here. You see here, arabesque. Here. It's en passant, and she doesn't stay in passé position. Mm -hmm. Arabesque, da dam. And here, here is dam and turn. I always felt as if my shoulder was going all the way over here. Bam, bam, which gave a wonderful way of, once again, the audience seeing and he always said, you must see different parts of your hair, head, you know, different views. And then you go away, and then you come back, and then you say, here I am. You know, uh, how he demonstrated all of that, how important it was that people just weren't always en face. Now, there are moments in this Sugar Plum Fairy, like here, when she is en face. And there are moments, I remember, in Swan Lake when I had to be en face. En face means just straight to the audience. And I always found it so difficult because Balanchine, you know, was, we were so aware of different views. And in, in that way, it was made comfortable for us to prepare, like when I said for her to look into the lake. You say that so that they don't dunk. Sometimes if you say, look down, then they dunk, and that's wrong. So you look into the lake, dumb, dumb, and then turn all the way here. And every muscle in my body, my back, is being used for this. Now, 
It's made comfortable for me here because that's preparing me to do my next arabesque. But the hip has to get around. See, after that passe mm -hmm. for your precipitate, during the precipitate, hip gets ready for that next beautiful arabesque. You know, if you don't have this, if you don't have this soul, mm -hmm. the audience can't see your face. Yes. They don't know who you are. I am presenting myself. There I am. And just in order to say, there I am, means that I have to use all these back muscles in order to do that. And you know, I don't ever remember him talking about the back, because he could explain it in such an easier way for us to understand. And as I said to Jenny, you think about it all the time. You think that that foot is coming from coupe position out to here. Up well, you to said there. at one time presenting the foot to the floor. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> the foot is presented to the floor. But if you straighten it on the floor, look, my knee is bent, isn't it? Yes. It has to straighten. You see, the knee loops. Oh, it's just these details that it's, you know, one but this realize. is what we did for, yeah, when, by when she the first comes hour. in, you see, that's such a lovely pose. If you stood up just a little straighter, you'd look like a Russian ballerina. If you're just slightly inclined, you're a delicate, oh, she's younger. Such, she's charming, yes, it's, and it's she's such greeted, a tiny amount she's of difference. She's greeted the angels, <clears throat> and he greeted like this, not like this, not, not like Firebird. He greeted like this. Hello, lovely Spanish dancers. Hello, lovely angels. Hello, little girl and boy. You know. But it just gives such a different feeling. Right. <clears throat> and this is what you say to yourself. And that's how you get that feeling. And then Leia, for instance, Scotch Symphony is a completely different kind of feeling, a different way of doing, you know. For instance, when in Scotch Symphony, when she's leaving him, da 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 da, I didn't do da 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 da. You see? Yes. <laughs> da 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 um, da 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 da. You see how how he taught us that each hand reacts to the other hand. This hand does this, this hand does that. This hand does this, this hand does that. Right? It's not this. <laughs> I feel weird doing that. So if I'm going to go from here, fingers go out, and there they are. Then, very important hands coming down like this, as I said to Jenny. Very important. Um, using the music. So. And Nutcracker. We were all used to the Nutcracker part to do that we saw for years with Shura yeah. and Freddie, yeah. and in that small truncated nutcracker. Finally, when he did with you, the complete one in 54, what he did for you, I think, is a, is a wonderful way of showing the difference between Petipa uh, and Balanchine. Not only because he was using you in a special way, could you look back and think about the nutcracker part of death for a minute and, and the time he did that with you? Um, because he used you because you could get off the ground, yeah. you know, yeah. and there was much more of that in the Balanchine uh, uh, part of Dern, the Nutcracker. He made it into a new thing. Well, just, you know, um, I think I've said this before, how difficult it was. For one thing, Canny was so beautiful <clears throat> as a dewdrop. <coughs> we never had a dress rehearsal, you know that, Nancy. The costumes arrived at uh, intermission and um, Andre had sprained his ankle, <clears throat> so Nikki had to jump in 
at the last minute, maybe a day or two before. And George never had understudies. There was no understudy. When he choreographed Nutcracker for me, The Sugar Plum, there was nobody in back to learn. There was nobody in back to learn Nick, uh, Andre's place. So Nikki was brought in, and we had to learn this. So we came to the opening night. My costume got there, and I was the Sugar Plum Fairy. And at the, like the day before, George said, oh, Maria, I forgot. We've got the first entrance for you. And I said, what's that, George? <laughs> you know, what do you mean? He said, well, you, at the beginning of the second act, you are standing there, and the angels come, and you talk to, the, to the prince and the, and the little girl and this and that, you know. And then George said wonder, another wonderful thing. He said, you know, pas de deux must be like ballroom dance. And I said, George, that, you know, I loved a ballroom dance, but to get out there on one toe by myself and hope he's going to catch me. But um, that opening night, when we got to the part where we do the pirouette, and the audience gasped. And I got, I just couldn't believe it. It was so, it was like watching the tree grow and, in, you know, how beautiful. Remember at the old city center and it was quiver and shake, but it was fantastic with the music. So anyway, what, what I think George thought in this pas de deux, this nutcracker pas de deux, was, was it was like a ballroom dance. It was sweeping as opposed to the petit pas, which was very stiff. Not, I don't say stiff. It wasn't stiff. It was beautiful. But it was more static than what George was doing, you see. Now, certain, the Nutcracker part of this, certainly your variation, or your part anyway, the climax was this balance on one toe. At the very you, end. Which you, you managed to hold longer somehow than anybody thought you could. It was this, I mean, balance was one of your special. Balance, That's you know sure. where I, I, I learned that from Nijinska. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, all of this breathing also was from Nijinska. She, she actually made us use our hands like this. So that when I started working with George and when he first saw me dance, I was already doing that. Really? I was one step ahead of a lot of other people because one of the first things I danced for George was uh, the Greek, uh, you know, the, the Greek, uh, song the Norway. Song of Norway. Yeah. <laughs> and there was a, four girls and four boys did a waltz. And, I already knew how to waltz. Not a lot, is, waltzing is very difficult, but that was another thing. Of course, Nijinska was from the same school as Balanchine. So there, there was no dichotomy. I knew, you know, he knew. Of course, there were a lot of dichotomies and other things, but not as far as breathing. And, um, and when I used to give class, a lot of was learning how to balance, because it's necessary. So, once in a while, you have to get a little. It's a very exciting yeah, theatrical. Yeah moment, yeah. right, yeah. right.